Hi, it's Tilly, and today we'll be making tiefling druid horns using my pattern available on Etsy. I'll put a link in the description below if you'd like to purchase it, and thank you so much in advance for your support. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them either in the comments below or via Etsy. There's also a corresponding PDF booklet that will guide you through the creation process. A list of recommended equipment and materials are located in the PDF booklet as well. These horns are a symbol of the tiefling's infernal bloodline. Tiefling horns vary from one another, but these have taken on a bit more of a rustic look. There are two methods to cutting out. You can either print out the PDF pattern and cut out the EVA foam by hand, or you can use the SVG files with the Cricut Maker 3. Both methods are outlined in this tutorial and the PDF booklet. First, we'll go over the hand cut version. You can skip to this timestamp if you're cutting out via the Cricut. Print out the PDF pattern via a printer and cut out the template. Then hand trace the pattern onto 4mm EVA foam. I recommend 4mm as the largest size foam you can use, but you can also use 2 or 3mm. Next, use a box cutter to carefully cut out the pattern on a cutting mat. You can angle these cuts to help with the construction if you desire. Repeat these steps for the second horn. The second horn will need to be mirrored or flipped over to have a second horn side. Next, we'll go over the cutting via Cricut. Use 2mm EVA foam with the Cricut. If you're using my pattern, it will include the SVG files for the Cricut, so we'll start by uploading those files to Cricut Design Space. Start a new project and select Upload on the left. If you have not yet uploaded the images, you can select Upload Image and find the files on your computer. You may see an error message that text isn't supported due to the numbers in the pattern. You can hit OK or Continue. Select the file and then Add to Canvas. First, we will want to weld the shapes into one so that the shapes will be cut in the same orientation. If you do not weld the shapes, Cricut tends to move them around and it's harder to keep track of them in this original orientation to know which piece number is which. We'll want to select each shape in the detailed design all at once. Once all of the shapes have been selected, on the right hand side select Combine and then Weld. Then we can hit Make It. You can move the cuts to fit the space and see the dimensions of the EVA foam you'll need to cut out. In this example, I need to cut an EVA rectangle that is 8 inches wide by 6 inches tall. With the files prepped, we can grab our EVA foam. First, cut a rectangle of the 2mm EVA foam that is 8 by 6 inches or the size of your cut area. Next, back the EVA foam with blue painter's tape. This will help with the stability of the cut, and using a wide tape will help reduce the amount of small strips you'll need to remove later. Place the tape back EVA foam onto the Strong Grip Cricut mat with the tape to the mat. With our material ready, we can head back to the computer. Hit continue when ready to print and select craft foam as the material. If you don't have it saved, you can search for it. Leave the pressure setting as default, but edit the tools to select the knife blade. You may need to change your current tool for the knife blade and follow the instructions for calibrating the machine. Load in the mat and hit go to cut. This should take about five minutes or so per horn. I recommend staying near the machine to make sure nothing moves around, depending on how old your mat is. If your mat is losing grip, you can also use painter's tape to tape down the foam. Repeat these steps for the second horn, but the second horn will need to be mirrored or flipped to have each side. Once the cuts are complete, you can unload the mat and remove the excess. If you use the Cricut method to cut out, you can also now remove the tape backing. You can see the numbering here, where the number 3 will be the center back of the horn. Next, carefully add a thin layer of glue on the edges of two pieces. I recommend doing one edge at a time. Allow the glue to get tacky before adhering the pieces together. Allow to dry slightly before continuing to the other horn pieces. When connecting the last seam, pinch the two pieces together for a better fit. Allow the horns to dry based on your glue's instructions. If you have a lot of excess glue once dry, you can optionally dremel the edges to smooth them. If you do, please use proper safety equipment, including a respirator and safety goggles. When dremeling, move in one direction and carefully align the edges. Then, mix a paste of quick seal and a bit of water before coating the edges carefully. 
This will help hide the seed. Allow them to dry. Next, we'll add our detailed design. We'll be adding ridges on each side of the horn of the Dremel to give it more dimension. Use a small round Dremel bit to smooth out the edges and add a layering detail to the horns. This step is very fun and can be organic, so feel free not to be perfect. Add the dimensions and stripes to all sides. Remove any dust from the horns with a fan or brush and use a heat gun to smooth the details. If you lose too much detail, you can go back and add it back in. Plasti dip each horn in the front and back. I recommend three coats of Plasti dip. Please use proper safety equipment. Once dry, you can paint them as you desire. I like to use a sponge to paint the base. I first sponged on a layer of gray and let that dry. Next, I sponged a layer of brown, but allowed some of the gray to show through, letting that layer dry as well. Then I went back in with a paintbrush and added highlight and shadow to the ridges. I used a black in the drilled ridges and a mix of white, light brown as a highlight. Seal the paint with acrylic paint seal. For attachments, I recommend hot gluing small rubber hair bands to the front and back to pin into a wake or hair. And with that, they're complete. Enjoy your horns and good luck on your adventure. If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. To show off your hard work, tag me at Tilly Boom Cosplay. I'd love to see your finished pieces. Thank you so much and I will see you next time. Bye.